President Obama less than 14 hours away now from addressing a joint meeting of Congress in an uncertain nation. The speech comes as stocks hit a 12-year low. The administration considering unprecedented steps to save the economy as well. Joining us now live from the briefing room at the White House is Press Secretary Robert Gibbs. Robert, it's good to see you this morning. So we've got the Dow here down at levels that we haven't seen since 1997. We've got banks, insurance companies, the auto industry all lining up for billions of dollars more in bailouts. You're, you're, you're frantically trying to stop the bleeding here and so far it's not working why well look uh, John we've been here about a month and let's review what's happened so far we have a recovery and reinvestment plan that's now the law of the land and as you'll hear the president talk about tonight is already uh, working on getting tax cuts to the American people and creating jobs the bill has already done that but you'll hear him talk tonight about financial stability about a housing plan for responsible homeowners that have played by mm -hmm. the rules uh, you'll hear him talk about re-regulating the financial industry so we don't find ourselves uh, at this point again. And you'll hear the president end tonight with a strong, hopeful message that we've met many of the challenges that have always faced this country and come mm -hmm. out on the other side uh, for a brighter America. And I think that's what you're here tonight. Robert, he said much of that already, albeit not all at the same time as he will tonight. And still, the markets do not have the confidence that they need to get going again. But what more can he say to give them that confidence? Well, look, uh, we've got a lot of challenges, and we didn't get here overnight, John, and I think whether it's a Wall Street investor or a family at home watching this program, we're not going to get out of this overnight. I'm not, you know, whether we've hit the bottom uh, or not is, is hard to tell, but what this president is focused on is taking steps each and every day on the things that I just mentioned to put people back to work and to get this economy moving, growing, and going again. That's what he's focused on. It's going to take a while to do that, but he's focused each and every day. What about uh, all of this talk in recent days about nationalizing or at least partially nationalizing some banks? Not the system itself, but at least some banks. Citigroup is, uh, is among them. Are we, uh, is that going to happen? Well, uh, I don't want to get into what Citi might be talking about with financial regulators or financial authorities now, but I can tell you this, as I've said from this briefing room and from the podium behind me, is that our banking system should be privately held and regulated by mm -hmm. the government. That's what we've always had, and that's what we'll always have in this country. Right, but, but, you know, but it comes to a point, though, where the government may have to put so much money into these banks that you do have to take a position as the majority shareholder in the bank. Do you see us coming to that point? Well, again, without getting into the specifics, I think the president uh, is, is anxious to get the credit system flowing mm -hmm. again so that banks are lending to families and small businesses. Uh, but we, we can do that with a privately held banking system. Uh, that's what this president believes. we got a, a lot of people, Robert, asking us about the uh, the tax rebates here, the tax cuts and exactly how much money it puts into their pocket. It's been done in lump sums before. It's not going to be in a lump sum now. It'll be paycheck to paycheck. Adds up to about $65 a month for the average American family. And, and some many people are wondering, well, how much of a stimulus can that really be? And then there are other people who say, well, if I get that money, I'll save it. So how much of a stimulus would that be? Well, what we think and the reason that it was designed the way it was to give people more in their paychecks each and every month is what we found when Congress did this last time through a lump sum payment, that people understood they weren't going to see that month after month. They instead were getting a one-time check, and they tended to put that in a piggy bank or a savings account. What we believe that is if people begin to see a change in their paycheck each month, They'll begin to use that money, spend that money, and get this economy moving again. That's what I think that we'll see and people will start to see in their paychecks uh, beginning April 1st. And you're also talking about cutting the deficit in half. Cutting it in half would be about $530 billion a year by the end of the first term. I mean, $530 billion is still a staggering figure in terms of the deficit. But one of the ways that you say that you, you might get there is to, to raise taxes again on people who make more than $250,000 a year. Republicans are saying, whoa, you're talking about raising taxes again in the middle of the worst economy that we've seen since the 1930s. How can you do that? Well, again, John, let's, uh, as you just said, and I think it's important for viewers to understand, that's for people that make $250,000 mm -hmm. a year or more. You may hear a lot from members of the Republican Party in Congress. Understand that none of them make $250,000 a year or more. They're well paid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They've got good jobs. Uh, they're not going to see their taxes go up because right. they don't qualify for that threshold. This is uh, returning some fairness to our tax code. We're going to give tax cuts to working mm -hmm. families. We're going to raise taxes on the, the, the very small percentage of people that have had it good for many, many years and restore some fairness to our tax code and start helping working families again. Robert, one quick question before we go. Are you yes, going sir. to put this helicopter contract on hold? 
Uh, the president, uh, when he read the story in the paper about 10 days ago, we were on the airplane. We talked about this. We were both surprised that the airplane that we were on, which is huge, cost as much as the helicopter yeah. we were on. The president talked to the secretary of defense. Uh, and uh, I think, as he said yesterday to Senator McCain, uh, we don't need any new helicopters at the White House. So does that mean you're going to put that contract on hold? Uh, he, that's exactly what he talked to the secretary about. All right. Robert Gibbs this morning from the White House. Robert, it's good to talk to you. Thanks very much. Looking Thank forward you, to tonight. 26 minutes now after the hour.